Okay, everyone, good morning. My name is Lars Brinkhoff. I'm from Sweden, by the way. Uh, I am here to talk about the incompatible time sharing system. A little bit about my background. I got started as a kid uh, programming BASIC on a VIC-20 computer. Uh, I switched over to assembly language programming on a 68000 processor, the Atari ST. Uh, I read this book, The Hacker's Dictionary, which is full of uh, histories and uh, mythology and a lot of uh, it is about PDP-10 computers, so that kind of stuck in my mind as a kid. Uh, much later, I was involved in uh, adding uh, assembler and uh, linking support to the Binutils tools uh, for the PDP-11, so that kind of got me started with uh, retro computing. And then I contacted uh, a company in Seattle, which still makes the PDP-10 computers, and asked about doing the same for them, and they said, yeah, sure, uh, do you want to work for us to port GCC? to the PDP-10, so I did that for two hours, for two years. So then I was really into this retro computing and PDP-10 computers. So I, uh, I decided to look, in, look into uh, this ITS operating system, which I read about as a kid. So a uh, short overview of my presentation. It's, first of all, what, what is ITS, uh, the history, and kind of what makes it special and a little bit about what's going on today. So first of all, what is ITS? Uh, it's an operating system, a time-sharing system for the PDB-10 family of computers. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Uh, it's a time-sharing system which means that uh, like 10 or so people shared a single computer. It was first written at MIT, this is MIT, uh, in, in Massachusetts, USA, in uh, 1967, and uh, it was running until 1990. Uh, one of its most uh, famous characteristics is that it has no security. So I'll tell you a bit more, more about that later, but it has no passwords or file permissions or anything, so it's very open and very easy to use in a way. Uh, and it was involved in a very interesting period of time uh, when the ARPA network was made, uh, which evolved into internet we have today, and uh, it's, uh, as, as LISP was invented at MIT, it was heavily involved in LISP development and uh, many interesting games like Sork, the Emacs editor, and so on. I'll tell more about these in other slides. So, uh, the PDP-10 computer, uh, it's a very large computer made by Digital Equipment Corporations, or DEC. Here is uh, a typical setup. Mm. Just this part here is the CPU, so you can see it's rather big. Uh, there were five generations through the years. First, it was the PDP-6, which was kind of the prototype for the PDP-10. And then uh, four models, KA, KI, KL, KS, for the PDP-10. Uh, there were no, no more development from uh, 1983 or so. So that's kind of where the PDP-10 ended, and also the, the therefore, ITS fell out of use eventually. Uh, it has a 36-bit word length, which was quite common in the 60s. And it was designed with Lisp in mind, so you can see that two 18-bit addresses fit in a word which is perfect for Lisp and a cons cell. Uh, it's very nice to program in assembly language, so it was very popular with programmers and academics. Uh, especially on the ARPA network. Uh, at some point, maybe a third of the computers on the ARPA network were PDP-10 computers. So it was quite dominant in its day. Uh, just to paint a little uh, 
picture of the landscape right before ITS was made. Uh, there was an AI, artificial intelligence group, formed in the late 50s at MIT, kind of where uh, AI research began. Uh, there was a CTSS, compatible time sharing system, for the, this IBM computer in the early 60s, and it was one of the early time sharing experiments before uh, time sharing was even uh, invented. Or, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the, the time-sharing concept was invented recently, and this was one of the first experiments. Uh, and then we had Project MAC uh, formed at MIT, uh, which involved both time-sharing and uh, development of, of Multics in the mid-60s, and it was also uh, for the AI research. Uh, and. Uh, not a very good photo of uh, this particular Multics uh, computer, but there's one I found. So, um, ITS was written at this AI laboratory uh, at Project Mac uh, for their first uh, PDP-6 computer. Uh, it's, uh, at first they started uh, with uh, uh, standalone tools which uh, ran uh, without time sharing, so they had an editor, assembler and so on, but only one person at a time could use it. So it was realized that it would be more efficient use of the computer if you could have a time sharing system, so ITS was written for that purpose. Um, they also had access to CTSS and Multics, but they didn't like it. Uh, it those were very responsive systems. Uh, it was more like a line-oriented system, and uh, maybe it could uh, take up to a minute to get a response sometimes. So uh, the, the researchers and uh, so-called hackers, which wrote ITS, they didn't like those systems. So uh, here's a, a picture I found. Uh, in the ITS uh, backups, which says happiness is not using, mul using multics. So that's kind of how, how they thought about multics and why they wrote ITS. Uh, I mentioned hackers. Uh, hacking is uh, something that's been going on at MIT for, for a very long time. Uh, and uh, hackers uh, consider themselves uh, very... Uh, very good programmers, uh, before the term was changed to mean uh, computer criminals. Uh, they wrote ITS uh, more as a practical tool, whereas, uh, let's say, Multics was more like uh, something they planned for years and implemented for years. But the hackers, they wanted something done now, so they wrote ITS very quickly, and it was very uh, oriented towards practical use. So uh, it's also highly interactive. Most programs respond within uh, less than a second if you type a single character. So many of the programs are very uh, character-oriented, whereas, whereas Multics is more line-oriented and less interactive. As I mentioned, there are no passwords uh, until uh, later when they were for, kind of forced to add passwords for incoming network connections. And no file permissions, uh, so it's very easy to get access and there was source code for everything open, like open source today. And also a do-it-yourself attitude. So if you needed a feature, well, well now, why don't you implement it yourself or, or fix a bug or anything? And they allowed the guests coming in from the network and also like high school kids in the area could walk in and start to use the computer. Like, it kind of even encouraged that. Uh, after this initial period, uh, there were a, a, a period of uh, further development. The, the IOLAB got a, a, a newer PDP-10 computer to uh, replace or supplement their PDP-6. In the late 60s, uh, they added virtual memory. The first uh, system didn't even have disks, but as soon as they added disks, they could have uh, swapping and paging towards the disk. The, they joined the uh, very fresh ARPANET uh, in the early six, uh, 70s. And uh, two more groups got their own PDP-10s and uh, started using ITS on those as well. 
So that's an actual photo, one of the very few of the AI lab PDP-10. And uh, this one is for dynamic modeling, uh, headed by uh, Licklider, who was the one who started ARPANET. And the third one is for uh, mathematics, uh, which I'll talk about more later. So, uh, in the mid-70s, uh, there was a period of very, uh, a lot of development and uh, uh, new things happening. They, uh, since they were on the ARPANET, they had a common uh, router, so to speak, so they used that for internal networking, and they made a, a network file system that could uh, transparently access files between all these computers, uh, maybe the first network file system. Uh, they uh, implemented new graphical displays with these uh, fancy keyboards which has uh, control, meta, uh, alpha, lambda, and so on. We have a forerunner to the Lisp machine keyboard. They, they implemented their own uh, Chaos network with a local, uh, kind of like Ethernet, but their own version of that. Um, they got yet another fourth PDP-10, a, a KL-10 model, which is the biggest and fastest, uh, mostly for running Maxima, which is a, a mathematics program. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, the Emacs editor was uh, implemented in 1967. And in the 80s, they uh, switched with the rest of the ARPA network from, uh, from the old protocol to TCP IP. So a little bit about the various kinds of research done with these computers. Uh, first and foremost, artificial intelligence, of course, and robotics and computer vision were kind of part of that. Uh, as I mentioned, Lisp and Scheme. Uh, well, Lisp was invented on an, an IBM mainframe, but it was the, the famous Mac Lisp implementation was developed under ITS, and Scheme was in, uh, invented on these machines. And eventually they uh, created uh, special machines for running Lisp, uh, Lisp machines. Uh, there was Maxima for mathematics, the logo programming language, uh, we see a turtle for turtle graphics there. Uh, Model is a kind of important language in some, uh, and Clue as well. I'll, there's a separate slides for those. Uh, here's a uh, famous AI program. It's kind of hard to pronounce, but something like Shrulu. It's a kind of a robot simulation uh, with a graphical display. You can tell it in natural language what to do and how to manipulate these uh, geometric objects in a small world. And it would uh, kind of plan and solve problems if, if it wanted to uh, rearrange things and uh, things were blocking each other. It could uh, come up with a plan how to uh, perform the actions. Uh, okay, Lisp, as I mentioned, it was invented in the late 50s by this guy, John McCarthy, for an IBM A-frame. Uh, but it was, uh, as soon as they got the PDP-10, it was uh, implemented for that. And it was first running standalone and then ported over to run in time sharing. And then it was called Mac Lisp uh, for Project Mac Lisp. It had a great compiler. Uh, uh, here we have uh, Greenblatt to the right and uh, Tom Knight uh, to the uh, left, uh, who made the Lisp machine. And we have Guy Steele, who invented Scheme. Okay, Maxima, uh, it's a program for symbolic mathematical uh, manipulation, uh, kind of like uh, MATLAB or uh, or from Alpha or something like that. It was mainly written by Joel Moses here. Uh, it was so important that uh, lots of people from all over the ARPA network uh, logged in from remote sites to use this. So it was very important. It was written in MacLisp, so uh, there was a lot of funding for uh, development on, and maintenance of MacLisp, and uh, it was so important they got two PDP-10s just for uh, researching and development 
of uh, Lisp and Maxima. The logo programming language, uh, it was invented at uh, the BBN company uh, in Massachusetts, but uh, pretty soon it's moved to MIT, and uh, for, uh, for all of the 70s, it was uh, pretty much developed uh, under ITS. So we have, for example, the, another uh, turtle there. And uh, over there we have uh, Marvin Minsky, and he invented a machine for running Logo, which is very well, well hidden secrets, but um, we have an emulator for that now. And they also had their own uh, smaller PDP-11, and they wanted something uh, familiar with that, so they wrote a, a small ITS system for that PDP-11. And that is also working on an emulator, and it's kind of similar to this Big Brother uh, PDP-10 ITS. I mentioned the model programming language. Uh, its uh, most famous uh, thing is that it was used to uh, implement the Zork game. Uh, it's kind of a Lisp. It was intended as a kind of Lisp 2.0, but uh, it was only used by one of the groups, the dynamic modeling group. Uh, the other groups uh, kept using uh, MacLisp instead. Uh, of course, uh, Zork led to the uh, Infocom company and the text adventure boom in the 1980s, so that left, uh, left quite a mark. And it was also used to bootstrap another programming language, which was... Uh, yes? I heard of the uh, ZIL, the Zork implementation language. Right. Uh, was that a, a later thing for microcomputers? Yes. So uh, the, the original sort was written in model and it didn't have like a, a framework, it was more like a monolithic program. And then they invented uh, the Zork implementation language, which did, uh, as far as I know, a run on PDP-10s, but it generated code for a virtual machine that ran on the microcomputers. Uh, it looks very much like model, but they are separate things, really. So uh, the clue language. Uh, one of the most important languages no one had heard about. Uh, it's, the, the name stands for cluster, uh, which is kind of a class. Uh, it was uh, invented by Barbara Liskov here for exploring a new concept of data abstraction, which we all take granted today. Uh, it, it's, it's very, very modern. It has exceptions, iterators, parametric types. Uh, it's uh, all the language designers in the 70s, 80s, 90s know about this, and it influenced many of the languages we use today. Uh, so it had really a really great impact, but outside of language designers, almost no one heard about it. And uh, also, uh, Barbara Lissos Clue Group, uh, they uh, got some graphical uh, workstations, and they needed a graphical uh, window system for that. So they took something from Stanford called W, and they developed X. So uh, that's where the X window system came from. There were a lot of games on ITS. Uh, Space War was invented on a PDP-1 but it was supported to the PDP-6 and 10 as well. And it runs under time sharing in ITS, if you like. Uh, the MacHack 6 program is a Greenblatt's chess program. It's a, a picture there. It was the first program to compete against uh, humans in real chess tournaments, so it even had like a membership in a chess club. Uh, the adventure game was uh, very influential uh, in the text gaming, uh, text adventure uh, genre, and uh, was the inspiration for Sorg. It wasn't invented on ITS, but they had it running there as well. Uh, Maze, uh, you can't see it very well over here, but it's uh, kind of the first first-person shooter 3D game. Uh, there's another uh, unknown game called Dazzle Dark, but which I would like people to know more about, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I will not tell you more about that, but I want to mention it anyway. Uh, Lunar Lander is a, 
a famous game uh, for landing something on the moon surface, and of course, Sork, as I mentioned before. I uh, also want to, to mention a little bit of the, of the multiprocessing aspects. Uh, we, we don't have just the PDP-10 computer and that's it. We have, have a PDP-10 surrounded by many other, uh, many other smaller PDP-11 computers. They still had the PDP-6 attached for uh, running standalone programs without time sharing. So it was kind of a real-time microcontroller except very big. Uh, they developed the first Lisp machine called CONS, which was directly attached to the PDP-10 with shared memory. And also a chess machine for uh, Greenblatt's chess program. We have a GT40 up in the upper right, and we have a Luna Lander running on there. And uh, the, the maze, the first person shooter game, was running on the IMLAC to the lower left. And the lower right, we have that logo machine, Marmin Minsky made. Uh, it had a, a dual displays, one for text, one for graphics. And for all this, there were tools, software, and so on, on the ITS system. So it was kind of the hub of all this uh, development. Some of the special, special features. Uh, one of the most... Uh, Prided features is uh, PC losering, which uh, sounds kind of uh, strange, but it means that uh, a user space program it can never observe another user space program when the other program is running in the in the kernel. So as soon as you say you're debugging another program, uh, it will either finish the operation uh, halfway or back out and uh, go back to user space. So that's that's kind of good for debugging and things like that, and that's something that Unix uh, still has some problems with today. It just isn't really a solved problem. Uh, as soon as you log in, you will see that uh, you're in a very strange uh, user interface, which is actually a debugger, which is actually uh, quite uh, convenient for starting and manipulating programs. Uh, this has this uh, single character user interface, which most programs in ITS has. So it's very quite different from Unix, but once you get to learn it, it's kind of like Emacs, but for uh, memory and uh, jobs and files. Uh, they had the user space device drivers, which uh, one of those were for implementing the file system, the remote file system. They had real-time scheduling for controlling robots, and uh, since they had uh, lots of different terminals, they had uh, quite advanced uh, tech terminal independent system, kind of like cursors for Unix. Uh, some of the uh, things we consider limitations today, there was just one level of directories, so you could not have a directory inside another directory. And also file names are just two parts, we, each of which is just six characters. So that's a bit of a limit. Okay, uh, in the 1980s, there was a, a decline period. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, DEC stopped uh, making hardware in 1983. That was kind of the uh, cancellation announcement. Uh, the old machines, the PDP-6 and KAs, were uh, kind of not working anymore. They were scrapped. So at one point, there was just one machine running ITS. Uh, but DEC they donated several KS-10, the newest model, uh, and it was ported over to that. So there we have actually the new AI ITS machine, which is now in Seattle. Uh, the KL-10 was also getting old, it was uh, shut down and shipped to Sweden in the late 80s, and then also shipped to Seattle, so Seattle is now kind of a PDP-10 uh, hub. And eventually uh, the KS-10 machines were, uh, the disks and memories were getting old, so they were shut down as well in 1990, so that was the end of ITS uh, at MIT. Uh, here's some data. Uh, 
These are all the uh, unique timestamps from the files that are on backup tapes. So that kind of gives you an idea how, ma how much work was being done over the years. So we can see uh, they started backing up around here, but then the usage clearly shot up. It's a peak here, probably because uh, the new KL10 was uh, started then. And then we can see there was a period of uh, sustained development and then a decline in the 80s. Uh, here's another view of data. Uh, this is the uh, version numbers for ITS. It started way back in 1967, but we don't have any data for that. The first we have is uh, around 600 in 71, and we can see it kind of grows quite linearly. And in the mid 50s, that's a jump, maybe because the new KS10 computers arrived then. And then it's kind of leveled off in the late 80s. Uh, some of the uh, legacy things we still have today that comes from ITS. Maybe one of the most important is the GNU project. Uh, I'll talk about more about that. Uh, the Emacs editor was uh, ported over to Unix, a new implementation which is still running today. Uh, both Emacs Lisp and the standard common Lisp uh, pretty much comes from uh, Mac Lisp. Uh, Maxima, uh, I'm not sure. It was still av available in a commercial version not too long ago, but I'm not sure today. But anyway, there's another Maxima, uh, a free software which comes from the original uh, ITS Maxima. Uh, I would argue that the meta key we have on some keyboards today comes from these uh, keyboards, and then were, was, they were supported in X as well, and that's probably why we still have it today. Uh, Unix job control. If you type control Z, Z, it's, uh, it's to uh, suspend a program, and that's exactly what it is in ITS as well. So it was actually an MIT ITS hacker that added that to Unix. <coughs> and the more utility, is uh, a Unix version of what's done uh, internally in ITS, and of course this it's called less in the GNU version. The, the GNU project was started by uh, Richard Stallman, which uh, was an ITS hacker from the early 70s. So he was uh, greatly inspired by the ITS values and how everything was free and open. And apparently he, uh, he uh, tried to update some software for this Dover printer, and he wasn't allowed to, so he was so angry with that, so he started the GNU project. Okay, so uh, after this decline period in the 80s, uh, people were still curious about ITS in the 90s. Uh, so, uh, a PDP-10 emulator was written and it was running ITS in the early 90s. Um, that emulator wasn't available to many people, uh, but uh, in the early 2000s, there was another PDP emulator available. And that was uh, put on uh, internet in the early, in 2001. And uh, a public ITS distribution was made. <clears throat> it was kind of a finished uh, disk image with everything, well, not everything, uh, those programs that were available in 1990 were in that disk image. It was kind of a static image, but uh, uh, very much usable nonetheless, but without much of the older software from like the 70s or 60s. And uh, many Unix tools for these files and protocols were written. And here we see uh, a photo of a <clears throat> an FPDA, PDP-10 computer, which is running ITS. Um, what, uh, this is more recent development. Uh, when I got involved in like uh, seven years ago, uh, I I got in touch with MIT, 
Uh, I got access to their uh, archive of the PDP-10 backup tapes. So I was able to go through these and locate many old programs. And I decided rather than produce a static disk image, uh, I would have to build scripts that takes all the source code and builds and assembles and compiles and so on. So we can know how, how exactly how everything needs to be built or we can uh, also make updates and bug fixes and so on. Uh, and uh, to, do, to run all these old programs, we also have to update the PDP-10 emulators for lots of strange hardware that was used. Uh, and the MIT hackers like to use uh, their, uh, or invent their own special hardware, which was only like one or two ever made. And there was also uh, an emulator for the Chaos Network. Uh, here's an actual tape. A photo from that archive. Uh, so this describes a little bit more uh, in detail how this uh, build script works. Uh, it makes a, a virtual magnetic tape with just a few bootstrap programs to make a file system on a disk. And then it uh, copies uh, the ITS kernel and a few assemblers and so on onto that binary, uh, onto that disk. And then we get all the source code, and there's a script we build, builds like over 400 programs, which takes like one or two hours. It would take, probably take weeks uh, back in the day, only if they ever did it on the real machine. And uh, we added many bug fixes and updates, and uh, there's the GitHub project, so we have a kind of issue tracking and continuous integrations on all those modern facil facilities. And uh, the most recent development is uh, Oscar's uh, PyDP10, which we have uh, on an exhibit here today. So we are very excited to see this uh, soon coming alive. And finally, uh, if you want more information, we have the GitHub project. Uh, we have a new manual uh, being written for uh, ITS and all its programs. And one of the most engaging descriptions is this book, Hackers, which uh, describes a lot about the uh, PDP-6 times and how ITS was written and so on. So I recommend that book. Okay, that's it for my uh, pre presentation. So do we have any questions? <laughs> a lot of information, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Come talk to me later. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. <laughs>